And of course, we're going to plug in guess number two and apply the initial conditions. So again, the initial conditions were that q at zero equals q naught equals, this time we're using the cosine solution. So it would be a cosine omega t is zero, this is at time zero, phi. So q naught is a cosine phi. And then the other one, the derivative, the fact that dq dt is zero, would just be that, let's see, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, pull out an omega, so minus a omega sine, omega t is zero, we're doing this at time zero, phi is still there, that equals zero. This is the, di, the, the dq dt part. Again, two equations, um, two unknowns. So let's see, this is the zero, this is the one that we deal with, um, a can't be zero, omega can't be zero, we need sine of phi to be zero, and where is sine zero? Sine is zero when phi equals zero. I hope you can tell my phi's from my zeros. Okay. So if that is true, then we plug zero into here, cosine zero is one, and of course, again, um, a equals q naught. Pretty much the same thing we did last time. So what we get then, if this guess is q of t equals q naught, in this case cosine of the square root of one over L C T plus phi. I'm sorry, uh, plus nothing. Phi is zero. Yes. One over the square root of L C T. So it looks like for the same thing we have two answers. So let's plot them. Um, here we go. Let's plot uh, let's plot the cosine answer first. It's a cosine at time equals zero. Cosine is maximum, so it'll be um, q naught here. That'll be the maximum value. And then it'll follow a cosine function. It'll go down and up, go like that. So this is the cosine guess. Now, let's plot the sine uh, solution. See, the sine solution was also q naught sine, this same thing, plus pi over 2. Okay. So at uh, time equals 0, we just plug t equals 0 into a sinusoid, plus pi over 2. So that's really the sine at pi over 2, which is 1, which is the maximum. So it's actually here. It goes there. The sinusoid will keep going. Here, this uh, must be when the cosine, when this thing is making pi over 2. Right? That's when cosine is 0 at pi over 2. Now, if we take that pi over 2 and add another pi over 2 in the sine, those together make a pi, and at that point, the sine solution is 0. If you keep doing this, you're going to find they're right on top of each other. We thought that we solved this twice, but we really didn't. We got one answer. There are not two answers. So if you have a system described by a differential equation, and you guess a solution, and you use boundary conditions to get the exact answer, there's only one solution. There can only be one solution because physically it can only do one thing. There has to be one mathematical solution that describes it. And here it looked like we found two, but they're really the same. It may look like two solutions. It's really just one solution. Okay? This is called the uniqueness and completeness in differential equations. If you find one, it fits. You use matter conditions. It is both unique and it's complete. So if you've never had differential equations, this may have given you an idea. Really, we're just guessing the solution. If you ever hear a mathematician say, we're going to construct a solution, right? That's their fancy way of saying yes. You may hear a theoretical physicist say, let's begin with the following onsatz, right? Onsatz is basically German for guess. Onsatz is German for outset. So all they're really doing is guessing. So don't let them fool you.